Hello, you people. I hope you're keeping okay. As my name is Transparency, I'm the writer and the spoken word artist. I bridge the gap between what's spoken and what's acted upon. So today I'm just going to do three pieces for you, namely body parts, further yet further this, and if one day marriage finds me. I used to hate romantic movies. I still do. The thought of them giving people a false impression, wrong criteria, and custom-made smiles kind of annoys and disturbs my overactive imagination. Honestly, think about it. I'm not being sarcastic. But how can two people fall in love, get married, and live happily ever after in just one hour, 30 minutes? But if I'm to be honest, every now and then I find myself glued to the TV screen. Enjoying what I think I hate and feeling freed from the fear that one day the power of love will overpower me and marriage will find me. I never really allow my mind to contemplate on the issues of marriage. I just have a lot of questions I want to answer before I commit myself to somebody and lose my care. Don't get me wrong, marriage is a beautiful thing but if you grew up the way I did without a father figure you always envision yourself messing up in that area. Inexperienced questions you like, is arrogance the best way to earn your children's respect? Do I tell them I love them every day? Do I buy presents for them each week? But if one day, marriage finds me, will I be ready to inspire her with the investment of my personality? Will I still say I do even when the wedding celebration is ended? Will I still see her beauty even when no beauty therapist can remove the wrinkles of her face? Will I have the courage after 40 years together to look her in the eye and tell her baby, I still love you the same way a grade 2 student is impatient to examine his lunchbox. Will I still value and treasure her even when her hips and thighs cease to be a mystery? Will I still need her the same way a phone name needs a sinner? If one day, the driving force of love pushes me to recite my vows, will they be the shortest and most beautiful words she has ever been told? Will I have the courage to wake up each morning, leave my treasure in bed to pursue something less valuable than her? money. Yeah, I hope I will. But if one day marriage finds me, may I have let go of my immature ways. May I still be passionate about art so as to usher into a moment of worship, sacrifice and intimacy. May we meet at the same place of understanding, eat from the same source of knowledge and may we have the wisdom to put God at the center of our relationship. May she not compete with what she completes and may we celebrate our differences. May she openly confess that I have seen Ephesians 5 verse 25 manifesting through you, my husband. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if one day marriage finds me, may it draw me closer to God. Two seeds met, bringing about conception, producing a fetus in the womb of one. The period between pregnancy and birth slowly passed and into the world a child was introduced. Adorable, innocent, incorrupt in a corrupt world where men pleasure in sin, wounding the innocent in the name of gain. Two seeds met. Yet when the time came for the child to behold the donators, one had vanished. So time flew, the child grew, but into the scene he never appeared. Proving generous yet not considerate, loving, a visionary yet not envisioning the life of the child. So now the child grows to a single parent, mother, deprived of the privilege of having somebody to call a hero, father, the feeling and excitement of falling asleep in his arms, she will never know. So time creeps as she daily searches for answers, if only she knew the right questions to trouble her mother with. Two seeds met. What story will she narrate when children her age start to exaggerate stories about their deaths? Father, were you not aware that your 30 minutes of fun has consequences? If the child is to carry your genes and features, how will it portray your personal traits when you're gone too soon? Don't you realize you're equally as important as the mother? Even without breasts, you can still feed her valuable lessons. Two seeds met. Forgive me if I sound too emotional. If I cannot continue pretending like what our dear brothers and sisters are doing is worth approving, spilling seeds everywhere, making themselves baby-making machines yet never care to take responsibility, deriving joy from being addressed single mom, single dad, sharing the love, telling the child deserve love from both parents. Shouldn't our aim be towards marriage when dating, to see whether we are compatible to each other. Two seeds met. 
Consider me the voice of every child, often by the father's failure to respond to the call of duty, when private experiments produce results that could no longer be concealed. Every child has hope beyond hope to share intimate moments with the father figure, yet the desire goes unfulfilled. Every child with an aching void that no one tries to fill. Two seeds, two wrongs, they make a right. Falling pregnant may not have been part of the plan, but we all know that actions have consequences. Accept responsibility. Father your offspring. Let them not be troubled by the realization that our Father is out there, caring about a lot of things, but I'm not one of them. Two seeds. Open quote, when a human looks too good, Holy Spirit sit upon me, close quote. Eyes, allow me to educate and give you a little heads up. Believe it or not, you encounter things that are mesmerizing, body shapes that redefine the lines of symmetry and eyelashes that pose reality and command your full attention like a brigadier general. And when you turn back to tell her, my shadow is just a on me to pay you a visit. You see how her background forms a perfect layer of icing on her beauty. At best, you admire from afar, then you desire to close the distance of absence, sending signals to the hands. Hands, beware, for the eye should only see, see, to satisfy its passion, to lure you into touching. But you will not lead me into temptation. Hence, don't you see, if I see and tempt you to touch, won't you pin interest the other members of this body? Hence, I fear you might touch what you like and get to realize not only who is soft and in the name of love force the feet to tread to where satisfaction seems to be. Fit. There are boundaries. You can forcefully pursue what you're not seeing. You can be a stairway to leisure, pleasure, pursuing fast cars, fast foods, for instant satisfaction. Just because you see it does not mean you have to touch it. And if you are fortunate enough to touch it, that doesn't mean you have to undress it. You can't undress everybody you touch expecting to hear cut. This ain't no damn Van Damme movie or one of those pies they sell in America. Resist the urge to seduce with, with sweet words, dear poet. Save sweet lies. Spit out negativity. Paka Ipama one such words. Never bother to acknowledge their existence. Never confess information you didn't witness firsthand, dear mouth. Awkwardly, I've been listening to myself ever since I started. And I'm convinced the voice is mine, but the words feel like I'm doing a rendition on Brother Dillo's body parts. But since I'm halfway already, let me just finish and I'll call to apologize later. See, no longer can I bear the agony of using his grace in vain. Repenting after sinning to sin again to repent, no flesh. I found a new definition for repentance. It is believing and behaving. It is confessing and forsaking. It is a daily bed of saying no to the flesh and saying yes to the Lord. At least Catherine Kuhlman was honest about that. So Holy Spirit, the next time I see a human too bad for my goodness, restrain me. Because this body is your vehicle. And I won't let it drive you into places you have no intention of going.